come on and magnify his name. Worthy to be praised. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we worship. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. Worthy are you, Lord. Worthy, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Father, we worship you this morning with everything that is on the inside of us, Lord Jesus. We give it all to you this morning, Father. We surrender to you, Father God. We surrender to you, Lord Jesus. We give you our hearts this morning, Father God. We give you our lives this morning. We say, Father God, you alone are worthy, Father. You are the Alpha, you are the Omega, Lord Jesus. You are the first and the last. You are the beginning and you are the end. And this morning, Father, we bow before your throne and we declare that you alone are Lord God Almighty. We bow before you, Father, because you are our King. You are His Majesty. And this morning, we worship His Majesty. We worship you for who you are today. We worship you because you are a God who loves us. And a God who cares about us. You are a God who is mindful of us. You are a God who will never, you will say you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. We honor you today for your presence in this place. We thank you for your presence, Lord. On say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you again for your presence. Thank you for what you are doing in the house today. Thank you that when Jesus is in the house, Father God, miracles happen. Thank you that we are making room for you this month, Lord God. We're making room for you. Come and saturate our hearts, saturate our lives today with your presence. In Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Awesome presence this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. It's nothing like the presence of the Lord, and we are forever grateful to God. Amen. For His presence. We are forever grateful for the move of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And whenever the Spirit of the Living God moves, Amen. We've got to be thankful. Amen. We've got to turn around and say thank you, Lord. Amen. And I'm so grateful and so thankful that Jesus is in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's all about him this morning. Amen. It's all about him. And sometimes uh, you, we need to understand that there are moments in the presence of God. And, and, and whenever a moment comes, you've you got to jump into the river. Hallelujah. You've got, you got to push in. The, the woman with the issue of blood, she recognized the moment. She, she heard that Jesus was in town, and, and, and she said, I'm going to use this moment to get my miracle. It wasn't easy, and, and sometimes we come into the house of the Lord, and, 
there is a moment and 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 means we have to push through because now in the middle of our worship a, a thought pops up in the middle of your worship the enemy throws a a seed of worry and, and that is where we have to push it aside and we have to push through the bible said she had to push through in order to get to a miracle amen hallelujah so i want to encourage you this morning to keep on pushing in jesus name hallelujah uh, there's a principle that says push until something happens hallelujah we got to push in the spirit until we receive that breakthrough in jesus name hallelujah amen hallelujah praise the lord are we ready for the word of the lord this morning amen hallelujah we are excited lord in jesus name father bless your word today we pray in the name of jesus amen hallelujah last week we started our 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 series for the month which is dare to make room and the subtitle to our sermon last week was when jesus steps in or when jesus is in the house and that was part one hallelujah amen and and we said a few things we said that jesus ministered when we study the word we see that he ministered in various locations he he, he, he when he when he when he preached that sermon the sower sows the word he was actually standing in the middle of a field he preached in a boat he preached in a synagogue but there's a few times in the word where the bible says that he entered into the house hallelujah and when he comes into the house we said a few things we said hallelujah that when jesus entered into the house that needs are met amen hallelujah that jesus meets our needs hallelujah when he when jesus enters the house the dead is raised hallelujah come on there's resurrection power when jesus is in the house amen and when jesus is in the house number three the things of this world and the things of man has got to leave hallelujah because we serve a holy god amen and and the fourth one number four when jesus is in the house salvation comes hallelujah amen and so this morning we're going to continue and we're going to continue and we're going to we, we're doing part two this morning of dare to make room and when jesus is in the house we're going to look at it again today but this morning we're going to look at one passage of scripture it was our opening scripture last week mark chapter 2 verses 1 but this morning we're going to read right through right down to verses 12 amen mark chapter 2 and verses 1 to 12 and it reads as follows and it says, and again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. And immediately many gathered together so that there was no room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. Verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like this? Who can forgive sins but God? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your heart which is easier to say to the paralytic your sin are forgiven you or to say arise take up your bed and walk but that you may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins and he said to the paralytic i say to you arise take up your bed go to your house immediately he arose he took up the bed and went out in the presence of them all so that they were all amazed and they glorified God saying we never saw anything like this hallelujah we never saw anything like this they were amazed and they glorified God hallelujah a quick background if we go right up to verse 1 it says and again he entered Capernaum amen Capernaum was the chosen base it was the chosen base or the head office of jesus and his disciples um when he launched out into to ministry um 
Capernaum was a very important place because we find that uh, many of the mighty miracles of Jesus took place in Capernaum. It was in Capernaum that the future disciples of Jesus caught a miraculous um, catch of fish. We spoke about it last week when Jesus told them to launch out and to cast the nets over to the other side. It was in Capernaum that the woman with the issue of blood, that she was healed. It was in Capernaum that Jesus raised the daughter of Jairus. It was in Capernaum that uh, the two blind men was healed. And on the same day, Jesus also healed a boy that was deaf and was dumb. And now in Mark chapter 2, it continues. Amen. And it says that he went out and he came back and now he was in town. And then it says, and we spoke about this last week, it says that he entered into the house. And when he went into the house, the Bible says there was a noise. Uh, there was a noise. They said people heard that Jesus was in the, in the house. And so there was a noise about it. I, I, li I like this. There's another version that says it was rumored. Hallelujah. I, uh, it, it was rumored that Jesus was, was in the house. And I, I think it's so important that we as believers that we, we start spreading rumors about Jesus. Amen. Uh, that we start talking uh, about the love of Jesus that has no end. That we start spreading rumors uh, about the unrelenting grace of the God that we serve. Uh, I think it's so important that we start spreading rumors uh, about the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That he saves. Amen. It's so important that we spread rumors. Hallelujah. Amen. That we make a noise about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know what? When we, when we make a noise about Jesus, we will have the same problem that they had back in the day. This house, this church will be too small. Amen. People will come knocking on this door to come into this church. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that there was rumors. The Bible says there was a noise. There was a buzz. There was an, an excitement because people knew that Jesus was in the house. Uh, and we need to speak about the goodness of God. Uh, you need to go home on a Sunday in, during the week and you need to tell people that, man, God is good. Uh, you need to share the testimony uh, of, of Sister Michelle and say, you know, there's a lady in our church. Uh, man, they told us she doesn't have a salary this month, uh, uh, but there is oil in in her lamp hallelujah she's chosen to be oil she's chosen to trust God uh, she's chosen not to go down but to stay up in Jesus name uh, there are miracles happening in the house uh, and you need to come to church uh, and when they come you sit in your seat and you send father I thank you today is a day for their miracle today you will touch my friend today you will heal my sister today father God salvation will come they they will not come to church if we don't ask them to come. If we don't fetch them. Amen. We are fishers of men. Hallelujah. You need to throw your, your line in. And even if they say no, at first I bait. I'm bait a miss. You got to keep on throwing that. Did you ever see a fisherman just turn around and walk away? I, I'm, like, I'm not a fisherman. I think it's very boring. But amen. They sit there and they will throw that in until they bite. Amen. Your family, your friends need Jesus. Just because they said no one time doesn't mean they're not going to say no tomorrow. They might be praying right now and saying, God, I need a miracle. And all they're waiting is for you to drop them a phone call, drop them an SMS and say, you know what? I'm going to come and fetch you. You better be ready. I used to go. I mean, I, was a, I used to go, I, I was so excited about serving God that I used to go, I used to walk back in the day and I would go early and my friend's parents used to say, he come past here. And I used to sit and I used to wait. I give you 45 minutes, it's okay, get done, but we're going to go to church in Jesus' name. Amen, hallelujah. We got to spread the rumors about the goodness of our God hallelujah amen and so the Bible says there was an excitement and a large crowd formed and it descended on the house that Jesus was visiting the Bible doesn't tell us whose house it was 
and, and the place then became so full that four friends who were bringing their friend to Jesus for a miracle, they couldn't find a way in. So they opened up the roof, they lowered their friend to Jesus, and a mighty healing and miracle took place. And, and, and I believe that there are certain keys in this passage of Scripture this morning, man, that we're going to look at, we're going to go through it step by step, and I believe that it's steps that will release miracles in your life and in mine. Amen. I want us to look at verse 2 again. Verse 2 says, and says, and immediately many gathered together. Many gathered together. So they heard that Jesus was in the house. And the first point that I want to make this morning is this. When Jesus is in the house, there is an anticipation. Hallelujah. Another word for, an ant for anticipation is there is an expectation. Hallelujah. That something good is going to happen. Hallelujah. When Jesus is in the house, uh, there is a hopeful atmosphere. People came to see Jesus because they knew something was going to happen. And so when Jesus steps in, you have got to have this in your heart. You have got to have an expectation on the inside of you that something good is going to happen in your life. When Jesus is in the house, like now this morning, you got to say, man, I expect something good to happen for me. I expect something good to be released over my family, over my children. I, I expect something good to be seen in my life and in my home in Jesus' almighty name. Something good has got to happen in my finances. Hallelujah. But you've got to believe it. There's got to be an expectation that the goodness and the mercy of God is following you in Jesus' name. That is why I love that song that we sing. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Hallelujah. We've got to sing it. We've got to believe that the goodness of the Lord is our portion. We got to believe that God wants to do good in our lives. You're going to hear me say this a lot, but I personally expect the blessing and the favor of God upon my life. I refuse to believe anything else. I refuse to believe that we serve a God that does not have good intentions for me. I, I, I refuse because the Bible says that he is mindful of me. That means that he is constantly thinking about me. That his hand is upon me. David says in Psalm 23, your goodness and your mercy, it chases after me. It pursues me in Jesus' name. I refuse to believe that we serve a God that does not care about us. That we serve a God that does not have our backs. No. The God that we serve this morning is a God who loves us, is a God who cares about us, and is a God who is mindful of us. Psalm 121 says that he neither slumbers nor does he sleep. He is constantly watching over you, and therefore you can expect the blessing of God upon your life. Amen. You have got to expect it this week. You got to say, God, this week I expect the goodness of God to follow me. I expect miracles to be my portion. I expect this week to, for a turnaround in Jesus' name. Uh, God, there's an expectation on the inside of me that this week will be my breakthrough week in the mighty name of Jesus. When Jesus was in the house, uh, there was an anticipation. Uh, when Jesus was in the house, uh, there was an expectation uh, that something good uh, was going to happen hallelujah hallelujah expectation produces hope and when Jesus steps into the house the atmosphere changes it becomes hopeful not hopeless you don't have to go through life feeling hopeless and feeling defeated there are miracles waiting to happen in your life 
for your family for your marriage hallelujah in jesus name but you have got to expect it in the name of jesus there's got to be an anticipation on the inside of you that you serve a good god that you serve a god that can do anything for you and that will do anything for you in jesus name hallelujah psalm chapter 5 this is a psalm of david he says early in the morning you will hear my voice early in the morning i will make my request known before you and then it says and i will wait with expectation david says you can't even pray without expecting an answer he says when i pray in the morning i, I wait with an expectation in my heart uh, that god is going to answer my prayer that they are man they are miracles of prayers that need to be answered in your life uh, some of you uh, you're a little bit long you've been praying and praying and praying uh, i'm looking at granny this morning you've been praying and praying and praying and you're waiting for the miracle and you're saying lord when 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 you got to expect the miracle you got to expect the answer you got to expect the turn around you got to expect the breakthrough hallelujah we sing it he is our way maker you got to expect uh, that god will make a way for you uh, even where there seem to be no way but there's got to be an expectation on the inside of you uh, the other thing we need to uh, remember this morning is that God is moved by our faith and so the expectation that you and I have uh, 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 the anticipation it's got to be a faith expectation Hebrews 11 and verse 1 says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for that word hope it means a confident expectation hallelujah so in other words now faith is the substance of things that i confidently expect hallelujah there's got to be an expectation in other words i confidently expect god to provide i confidently expect that god will answer me and that he will break through for me when jesus entered the house hallelujah man the house was filled with an anticipation there was an expectation people came because they wanted something good to happen people came because they needed miracles people came because they knew that when jesus is in the house that the supernatural has got to take place in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah one of the biggest lies that the enemy wants you to 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 believe is that nothing good is going to happen in your life that is a lie from the pit of hell I don't believe it this morning I believe in the goodness of God in Jesus name and so I want to encourage you this morning to break out and to break free. Uh, they, they, they did a study of, 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 of prisoners that serve a life sentence. And, and, and there's this term that they use. It's in the American prison system. They use that, that system that nothing good is coming. And, and so what they do is they give up on life because they know sooner or later the visits are going to end sooner or later the divorce papers are going to be issued and so they go through they die in prison believing that nothing good will ever happen the sad thing is that there are people that are free but they make self they build their own prisons believing the same lie that nothing good is going to happen the devil is a liar this morning you need to say to him this morning, you need to say, I'm breaking free. I'm coming out in Jesus' name. I, I refuse to believe that my God is not a good God. I refuse to believe that my God won't make a way. I refuse to believe that, uh, that, that man, that my God, that my God can't break through for me and my family. I, I refuse to believe that my situation is permanent. No, 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 no. I, your goodness is running out running after me hallelujah come on i got to believe that the goodness of the lord hallelujah is my portion in jesus name don't create prisons 
Don't believe the lie of the enemy. You got to expect this morning when Jesus is in the house, when you make room for him and you say, Lord, come on, step into my house. There's got to be an anticipation. There's got to be a faith on the inside of you that says, God, I believe that you are on my side. And if God is for me, who can be against me? God, I believe that there is far more for me than those that are against me. I believe it. There's a faith on the inside of me that says yes to God. Hallelujah. My soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes. My soul says yes. Says yes. Oh yes. Hallelujah. My seal. My seal. Say ya. Say ya. Say ya. My seal. Say ya. Say ya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach you awake this morning. Hallelujah. Uh, my soul says yes in Jesus' name. Uh, my seal says yeah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, there is a yes on the inside of me for Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. He's never failed me yet. He's never failed me yet. My God has never failed me yet. Hallelujah. Come on. Sing song. Has never failed me yet. Hallelujah. Now you know how old that people are that sang that song. Ne? You notice I didn't sing with them because no fire young. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Lippi sang a lot Praise the Lord. Amen. But he's never failed you yet. And you've got to believe it. Amen. You've got to believe it. Say, Father God, I have an expectation that something good is going to happen in my life in Jesus' name. If you believe it, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So number two, number one, when Jesus is in the house, there is and anticipation and then number two when jesus is in the house and i love this there is a proclamation listen to verse two it says immediately many gathered together so that there were no longer room to receive them not even near the door listen to the last part and he preached the word to them hallelujah and he preached the word of god to them uh, there is a proclamation that comes when jesus is in the house and what i love about jesus is that when he steps into your house there is a word that comes with him hallelujah and we need to understand this morning that god's word is powerful that God's word is alive, that God's word never ever returns void or empty, but it will always accomplish what it's been set out to do. And the Bible says that when Jesus was in the house, uh, that he began to proclaim the word of God. Now this is powerful because the Bible says that Jesus in Luke chapter 4 was anointed to preach the word. Uh, he was anointed. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me to preach what? Good news. Hallelujah to the poor. And this morning I want you to know that there is good news that is being proclaimed today. When Jesus is in the house, there is a proclamation of good news. Hallelujah in Jesus name. And the good news this morning is that God is for you. This good news for, for you this morning is that you don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in bondage. You can be free. There where the spirit of the living God is, there is liberty. There is freedom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the Bible says that Jesus proclaimed the word. He preached the word, the good news to them while he was in the house. Now every year... Uh, I, I, I've got a, and you can put it on the screen, please. I've got a, a what I call a never again list. Uh, it's a list of, of scriptures that, 
that I personally speak over my life. Amen. It's good news. Hallelujah. That I proclaim and speak over my life and that I believe in Jesus' name. And I want to say it this morning. There's quite a few of them, but I would like you to say it with me this morning. Let's proclaim good news today. Are you ready to proclaim good news? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Say, never again will I confess. I can't. For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Philippians 4.13. Next one. Never again. Will I confess lack? For my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 verse 19. How many of you know that's good news this morning? Next one. Hallelujah. Let's proclaim good news. Never again will I confess fear. For my God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Second Timothy 1 and verse 7. Next one. Never again will I confess doubt and lack of faith. For my God has given to every man the measure of faith. Romans 12 and verse 3. I'm not done. Some more good news. Say never again. Will I confess weakness. For the Lord is the strength of my life. Psalm, 1, Psalm 27 verse 1. And the people that know their God shall be strong and do mighty exploits. Daniel 11 32. Can I say it again? Never again will I confess weakness in Jesus' name. Are we not done yet? Come on, we want some more good news. Say, Never again will I confess supremacy of Satan over my life. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. 1 John 4 verse 4. I don't get tired. We've got some more good news. Say never again. Well, I confess defeat. For God has caused me to triumph in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. Are we tired? Never again. Well, I confess lack of wisdom for Christ Jesus is made unto me wisdom from God 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 30 say never again will I confess sickness for, for with his stripes I am healed Isaiah 53 and verse 5 and Jesus himself took my infirmities and bore my sickness. Matthew 8 and verse 17. I believe, Lord, in Jesus' name. Never again will I confess worries and frustration. For I am casting all my cares upon him, for he cares for me. 1 Peter 5 and verse 7.